Hi guys, hope you guys are having a lovely day. Um, I am Nisha. I'm mom to 14 children. I have 12 of those children still living at home. And the other day we had a video that we put up about how, if we were going to get it all done. So I had 30 pumpkins sitting here on the table. I'll try to link that video below. And so we took those 30 pumpkins and in that night, that was Thursday night at about 4.30. And we took all the pumpkins, which covered this whole table, and we um, prepped them all up. So we pretty much chunked them up, put them in chunks to bake them down and all that type of stuff. Today will be our last pumpkin day. Yesterday we went on a field trip. We didn't get home till 4. So we did a couple hours in the evening last night. And then um, today is actually our last day that we're going to be doing things so far. I have 55 quarts of pumpkin um, chunked and canned already. I have 14 quarts in two All-American canners, and I have 14 more quarts down there. So today we're going to talk about pumpkin puree and how, um, how we store that and how we make that into a powder. Um, we're also going to talk about making pumpkin seed powder and why. We're going to talk about the three ways that we use the pumpkin puree. And then at the very end, I will show you a dump cake that I just made and give you the recipe for that. Okay, so um, I'm going to move my big pumpkin out of the way. I'm thinking what I want to do first. I think what I'll have to do first is I did some of these yesterday. So yesterday we did just... Um, <clears throat> hours of things at night. So what these are here are silicone muffin cups. And so I take a silicone muffin cup and this is half a cup of pumpkin puree and I put it in the freezer overnight. And then we have pumpkin puree like this. And so what I'll do is I'll just take a bag and write on the bag pumpkin puree. And then I'll write how much per cup. So I'll write half cup on there like that. And um, so I will write that down and then we'll be able to know what's in there. Sometimes I might know what it is, but then somebody else like the kids or whatever are looking for something and they're like, is this it? Is this it? So I'd rather just have it all written out. So we do some like this and we do some um, another way and I'll show you that. So the pumpkin puree like this is great if you want to add it into things that are small. So if we're doing a batch of smoothies, I could take like one of these and just add it in without having to like defrost a huge gallon bag of um, pumpkin because that can really become a pain if, you're, um, if I'm doing a huge thing of pumpkin because then it's like, oh, I got to use that pumpkin up. And I felt like I wasted a lot when I did that because... I would get the little bit that I had out of the bag for whatever recipe it was, but um, but then I wouldn't use the rest up. I'd have great intentions of using it up and this or that, but you could also use a couple of these in a batch of like oatmeal or um, <clears throat> if you have a recipe that calls for half cup or a cup, you have them just already in those increments that you can just... Um, just measure it out like that and not have to worry about it. So I like to do them this way. So what I'll do is I'll just pop them all out and then put them in the bags and then I'll keep one in the fridge freezer and one in my deep freezers. Um, what I'm trying to do, I recently got a side-by-side -side fridge and I'm liking to throw little bits of each thing into that side by side because my fridge space is actually a lot larger than it was in my other fridge. I used to have, this is kind of silly from such a big family, but um, I used to have an apartment sized refrigerator in our house. And then I had another refrigerator out in the garage because I'm cheap and I hate buying um, new appliances. I hate buying them brand new. I'd rather just get whatever I can buy for like $100 or $200 and use it until it dies and then feel good about that, that I didn't spend lots of money. Other people are different. They feel like if they invest the money, then they'll have it for years and years to come. That has not been my case. I feel like every time I get an appliance that's brand new, it would break like right after the warranty ran up. So I like to buy them used. I'm that type of person. I'd rather buy used furniture too because 
then I don't feel guilty if my kids, my kids are not like monkeys, but you have, you know, 12 children and they don't necessarily sit down appropriately, like sit in a seat nicely. They might like boing, 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 boing over there. So, um, yeah, I like to buy used furniture so I don't feel bad if something happens. I mean, I still teach them to, um, respect their stuff, but when they're young, sometimes instead of sitting gently, they just kind of walk. Okay, I'm going to fill this bag, and my daughter is right behind me, and she has the treat of the afternoon. So I just fill the bags like this, and then zipper them right up. I'm going to wait. Some of these are um, stuck, so I'm just going to wait a couple minutes for those to be unstuck. So I'll put these here, and she is going to... Maybe she's not. Let's see. Let's move this back over here. She'll give you a sneak peek of the dump cake. Hang on, sorry. Okay. It's okay. So that's the dump cake. Um, and I'll give you the recipe and how to after. So for right now, what we're going to do is just take the take the cups and put them back in. And then I'm going to refill them with pumpkin puree, puree that we did this morning. So all you're going to do is take these. And I have a measuring cup. Yeah, it's right there. And flip them the right way. And then we're going to fill them with the puree. <clears throat> Cook down a bunch of um, puree in the wood stove. It's really not that hot. I mean, not that cold. I think it's maybe like the 40s, so I really wouldn't need a wood stove on today. I think the high is like 52. I wouldn't really need a wood stove on today, but I put the wood cook stove on so I could boil down some pumpkin this morning. And I needed my um, my canners on, on my propane stove. So I put, um, so I made some pancakes on the wood stove as well. Just made it a lot easier to um, not have to worry about trying to squeeze in behind the big canners because my canners are big. I have two of the All-Americans. It's not the very biggest size, but it's like the neck size down. And um, they're big. They take up lots of space. You have to like fit them just right on the top or else you, um, or else it's a pain to unhook one and not have the other one. So didn't need to be trying to cook pancakes behind that in the two inch space. And these are almost done. So what are your favorite pumpkin recipes? I'm going to try to make a pumpkin pie with a gluten free crust. I haven't done a gluten free crust yet. So might be a little leery on that. Another thing that I want to do is pumpkin donuts. I have a recipe for that, so I'm going to try that probably this afternoon. The pie will probably wait. And this is what they look like right before they go in the freezer. So I'll leave those there for the kids to put in the freezer. These are the frozen ones that just need a couple more minutes. I'll probably have some of the kids like to pop these out. And we'll just put them in the bags like this. And I'm thinking I'm going to move this and show you my stuff for my... Oh, I'll do the freezer stuff first. Okay. So another way that we freeze is like this. So each of these are two cup measurements. I have a recipe that calls for two cups of um, pureed pumpkin. So I just do it in the two cup measurements because it's a muffin recipe and we use it quite frequently. So it's chocolate chip um, pumpkin muffins. So I freeze them flat so they'll stack easier in the freezer. I can put them in the freezer I don't know if we can do this okay i can put them like this in the freezer
so it saves room and you can see what's going on. So I did some of those the other night and I froze them last night and then I froze them like this. So these are the two cups. Try to measure things in the cup measurements that you personally use. It's no, no use if you put them in something too small and you're a big family or something too big if you're a small family. Okay, so now I think what I'll do is I will, so these, that's one way, two ways in the bag of the pumpkin puree, and then I'll show you here. I just stopped this. Let's see if this is ready. This one's not ready yet. Let's see if the bottom one is. Yeah, the bottom one is. I gotta put these on longer. I had um I have some seeds in there as well. So I just want it like this to come off. So this is pumpkin puree, nothing else with it. Pumpkin puree. And I'll pull it off like this and then I'll put it in the food processor and it makes a powder and I'll use that powder in cooking. So that is what I will do with that. This one's good. And then I'm gonna take my seeds down. Because these just got done. I had these seeds in the other day. I've already done one batch. So one batch full in Excalibur was three quarts of um, powder. So we'll probably have probably five quarts with what's here of powder. Let's see. That's a puree. Okay. I'll show you these. So these are the seeds. Hear that sound, that airy sound? That's how you want them. That's how you want them dehydrated, it's like with this airy sound once they're light and ready. So all you're gonna do with these, I'll save you the um, headache of listening to my food processor. All you're doing is putting it in any food processor for about three minutes, and then you'll get a pumpkin powder. So the pumpkin powder is like this and it can go um, any place. It can go on top of your oatmeal um, is a good one. It can go in smoothies. It can go on top of casseroles. It doesn't really taste the, the flavor too much. It gives a little bit of like a nutty flavor, but just a hint. It doesn't ruin anything. And so pumpkin seeds, we like to do this is because they're so high in iron as well as manganese and um, zinc. Yes, it took me a minute to think of that. So those three, um, there's actually lots of other things that there that's in there. I just can't remember off the top of my head. But I know for iron, it's one of the highest sources of plant-based iron. So it's great to like add this to whatever you can, especially if somebody in your family is pregnant or nursing or somebody in your family is um, low in iron. So this can be added to smoothies or anything else. Okay, yogurt. Oh, it's good on top of yogurt too. So that's that. So it goes from this into the powder and then we just keep the powder in. We have a we have two drawers in like this section and it's one's for a smoothie drawer and then one's a salad drawer. So we just keep it in one of those drawers so that we're, it's available for us whenever. Oh, let's see what else is on my list of things to do this afternoon. Um, canning. So we have, We have the rest of our canning to do, which is right over here. So all I do is I don't like to blanch lots of things because it takes so much time. So I just take raw foods. And pack them. So this is just our raw pumpkin. 
and then I'm gonna fill it with this is just this is the lukewarm um, water and I'm gonna fill these full and then I'll wipe the rims and then we pressure can these for 90 minutes all right they're out there running water so i can't really fill it up right now so I'm just going to take these, I'm going to wipe the rims like you would anything else, and then I'm going to pressure can those for 90 minutes. I'm using new lids. Sometimes I do use reused lids, but I only do that on things that I'm hot water bathing, not pressure canning. So I'll wipe the rims, I'll put the lids on, pressure can them for 90 minutes, which takes about three hours to get like a load through because you have to wait for the pressure to come up, pressure to come down. So remember that. I Last night I was actually on Facebook. At like, I don't know, maybe close to 11, 1030, something like that. I said, does anybody else do this? You think 90 minutes in your head, but then like you're not preparing for the rise up and rise down. So you're waiting up late at night and you, you know, your little things sizzling away while your canner is like rattling and just waiting for your jars. Well, you know, it's worth it in the winter time. It leaves you a little tired the next day like I am today and I'm kind of spaced out or whatever, but we're getting it done. By the time we're done... We'll probably have a lot of pumpkin. I think I'll probably have, let's see, that would be 15. I think I'll probably do about 100 quarts of the pumpkin. Um, and then I'll probably have 40 pounds of pumpkin puree for the freezer. A good thing is, is make sure you're using it. I know when I first started homesteading, I didn't use much. I would like make something and I'd be like, oh, it's so pretty. It looks so nice in the jar. And then I wouldn't use it. But make sure you're using your items. Look for ways to look for ways to use it. Google it, YouTube it, whatever, different ways to use pumpkin. So um, my pumpkin recipe. Let me grab. I'll just grab that really quick while I'm waiting for waters and stuff. Where did I just put it? I have a 12 foot table, but it seems so short when you're trying to do a bunch of things. It's a little too hot for me to do that. I'm going to grab some hot Only find one. That's helpful. I can grab it with one though. And so here is the dump cake. Not the most beautiful thing in the world. But it is yummy. Let's see. So I made this. This is gluten free. Soy free, corn free, all the free freeze. Um, and yeah, it's supposed to be like a cake, but almost like a scoopable cake. And you can serve this with vanilla. You can serve it with vanilla ice cream, coconut ice cream, um, like coconut cool whip topping, whatever you want to do. Let me see. I don't know if it'll actually come like out as a slice because it is like a scoopable one. Yeah, it's not going to come out as a slice. <clears throat> that said, what is in here is I took three eggs and then I whisked those up a little bit and I added two cups of pumpkin puree. And then, let's see, I took a can of evaporated milk and then three teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, 
um, I made my own pumpkin pie spice. Maybe I can go over that in a different video. Um, so three teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. I mix that all up and then I put it in the bottom. And then I put in gluten-free cake mix vanilla on top. Like I just, the powder, like I just sprinkled that on top. And then I um, took one cup of graham crackers that are gluten-free graham crackers. I took those and I sprinkled those on top. I had some leftover from, um, I bought some for s'mores. Um, so I, which I didn't like them for s'mores. They're really thick and they're like a weird texture, but they <sighs> seem to work okay for like crumbs. So I dumped that on and then I put chocolate chips on top of it, the dairy-free chocolate chips, put those on top of it. And then I did one cup of melted raw butter, like from our cows. We're doing, we're doing things with the raw butter, but we're not um, overall dairy. Um, but you could use coconut oil for that. And then you dump it all along the top. So the cake mix and all the crumbs and stuff are covered. And um, then you bake it for about 35 minutes in a 350 degree oven. So I'll write the recipe in the link down below and I hope you guys enjoy. What are you guys doing with your pumpkin? Let me know.